Hello! In this video, I'll show you how to customize your ShareWell portal in a very short amount of time. Here, I have an out-of-the-box portal. This is a great starting point because it shows examples of some of the common self-service activities that you might also want to include on your portal. There are a few customizations that we won't get to in this video, though. Things like allowing anonymous users to view knowledge, or to view your service catalog. Some of these configurations are a little bit trickier, so I'll devote an entire video to them. If there's something specific you want to see, please drop a comment below, and please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell to be alerted when I release those videos. Moving on then, let's start with changing the branding on our portal. One thing to note right off the bat is that I'm not in a blueprint even though I am in the admin tool. All of these changes will happen more or less in real time as I make them. I will note, however, that just in case something doesn't show up immediately, I do have a command prompt available so I can reset IIS quickly to keep the video moving. On your system, this won't be necessary, but you might have to wait a few minutes before your changes are visible. First, let's dive into Site Manager and open up my default portal site for editing. I'll set up a specific logo to use and then I'll go into the not logged in dashboard and make some changes to better reflect how I want to portray my service desk. Here, we're dropped into the dashboard editor, the exact same one we get in the desktop client to edit dashboards. The main difference here is we probably won't use very many widgets that show data. Instead, we'll just use some buttons, images, and shapes to provide the look and feel of our web portal.
And now let's see how that looks in the browser. It looks like it's still showing the old version, so I'm going to quickly reset IIS. Remember, on your system, this shouldn't be necessary. You can just wait a few minutes for the web server to pick up the new changes. You'll notice here that I, I do have some anchoring to work out, but I can I can go back later and fix that. So let's move on to the menu. Let's start by adding a link to my home page. In previous versions, there was also a password reset link, but in order to make it work, we actually would have had to add some other logic. This might be a good topic for a future deep dive, so leave a comment below if you agree. While we're here, let's also change the theme that the service catalog will use. So I'll choose this dark green theme. I don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but I think it might look uh, good with the rest of my branding. Uh, there are quite a few options here, so if that's something you'd like me to do a future deep dive into, leave a comment below. Everything else on the menu here looks exactly like I want it, so we'll leave it as is. The last thing left to do in the admin tool is to update the logged in dashboard on this panel here. We'll make changes similar to what we did for the not logged in dashboard. With that, we'll save and close the manager. Now let's see what it looks like in the browser. Now, we're not quite done yet. There's still one last thing to do, but we don't do this from within the admin tool. Instead, this is done from within the rich client. We need to define the services, categories, and subcategories that the service catalog will display.
first, let's pull up the All Services search. And we'll switch to the grid view. So it's just a little bit easier to see. And let's say for sake of argument that we don't have a telephony slash fax service. So let's make that inactive. Next, let's check our incident categories and subcategories, which we'll find in Table Management. Now, I don't use PeopleSoft, so I'm actually going to set this category so it doesn't appear in the portal. Finally, let's check our subcategories. Yikes, that's a lot of subcategories. Let's be honest, everything else could probably be accomplished in 10 minutes or so, but organizing your service catalog is going to be the most time-consuming part of configuring your portal. So with that, I'm going to leave this as is and call it good. I hope you enjoyed this brief tour of portal configuration in Sharewell Service Management. For more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to click the bell to be notified when we release a new video. If there's a topic you'd like to see me cover next, drop a comment below. Thanks for watching.